It's been a little over two years since our last retail settings and add-ons guides, and much has changed in the move from Shadowlands to Dragonflight. Not only has the entire UI for the game been rebuilt from the ground up, but the way players build their UI for PvP has also changed. With the massive influx of ridiculous burst damage that we saw in Seasons 1 and 2 of Shadowlands, the PvP community adapted and the era of weak auras was born. With this came a massive shift in how players forge their UIs, and so today, we're super excited to bring you the only settings and add-ons guide you'll need for Dragonflight as we walk you through step-by-step -step on how to set up your UI for PvP. And to make sure we're bringing you the best and most accurate information for building your user interface, we spent over a hundred hours researching and working with the absolute best players since the start of Dragonflight, including both Mystic and Marrow, two powerhouses of the European PvP scene that both currently sit within the top 10 of the PvP ladder. And speaking of the best players, we here at Skillcapped have spent the last few months working tirelessly to create some of the best content we've ever made. On our platform, you'll find courses that have been curated by the pioneers of every class, allowing us to bring you guides packed with content you won't be able to find anywhere else. From damage to defensive play and crowd control, we've got all the bases covered to guarantee you'll see results when using our service. We even recently introduced a brand new commentaries page so that you can find the matchups you care about in just a matter of seconds. Skillcapped members also gain access to the premium section of our Discord server, where our team of experts have been hard at work answering every single question you guys have thrown at us. And if that wasn't enough, we even offer a 400 rating guarantee or you get your money back. So what is there to lose? Check out skillcap.com forward slash wow and sign up today with the special discount link in the description. All right, let's get into building your UI. Now, while we are providing an import string that automatically structures your UI, which we'll get to later, there are a few important settings that you'll need to manually set up, starting with the gameplay settings. Start by pressing escape and opening up options. In controls, make sure you've enabled sticky targeting. Without this setting enabled, you will lose your target whenever you left click the ground. An example of when this might occur is if you're attempting to move by holding down both mouse buttons. When doing so, if you accidentally left click the ground before also pressing right click to move, you will lose your target if you have not enabled sticky targeting. Enabling auto dismount in flight is then recommended for world PvP, as this lets you drop on someone from the sky and immediately use an ability without having to manually dismount first. Next, disable interact on left click, which will prevent you from accidentally auto attacking and breaking CC in some critical moments. You should then find a good mouse look speed that lets you precisely control which way your camera is facing in as short amount of time as possible. And speaking of controlling your camera, it's also vital that you set your camera following style to never adjust camera. Without this setting, you are unable to move in one direction while looking in another without holding down your mouse. Moving into interface, make sure you enable always show nameplates and enemy units. We'll deal with minions and minor nameplates later with an add-on, so don't worry about them for now. We also recommend enabling larger nameplates, but you can play without this if you prefer. Healers may also want to enable friendly nameplates to have an easier time keeping track of their team's position. We're then met with another important decision as the choice between overlapping nameplates and stacking nameplates impacts how easy it is to accurately click on nameplates. Using overlapping will make it really obvious exactly where enemy units are positioned, but this comes at the cost of making it difficult for some people to click on a specific nameplate when there are several units stacked together. This can present a massive problem when facing shamans as it can prevent you from quickly targeting important totems like Sky Fury, Grounding, Tremor, Healing Tide, and Spirit Link. So if you're struggling to quickly click on nameplates when targets are stacked, stick to stacking nameplates. But if you have no problem accurately clicking on nameplates with overlapping enabled, then you should use it for the accurate positioning tracking. With status text, we recommend setting it to both as this will help you identify undergeared enemies by seeing their exact health number while also being able to recognize when execute abilities are usable based on the percentage of your target's health. For your raid frames, you should have everything enabled, while disabling display only dispellable debuffs to ensure all crowd control is visible on your raid frames. Moving into action bars, we typically suggest having 5 action bars enabled for a total of 60 binds, but this is entirely personal preference and you can have more or less depending on your needs. We also prefer to keep show numbers for cooldowns disabled so that we can use an add-on for this instead which we'll go over later. Next up in combat, you should first enable personal resource display and then show special resources on targets. After doing this, you can disable the personal resource display which we prefer to do as it clears up space in your UI which will be important later on once we start Start introducing add-ons. It's then absolutely essential that you enable target of target as being able to see who someone on the enemy team is targeting helps you identify who they're attacking. Loss of control alerts should also be enabled to make it significantly easier to see when and what crowd control has been used on you. 
Disabling scrolling combat text for self is also recommended, as we feel it adds unnecessary clutter to the user interface without actually providing any value. Auto self-cast can also be enabled to prevent the need for creating macros to cast spells in yourself whenever you're targeting enemies. Just know that this can backfire when you're playing with a priest, because if they mind control your target and you attempt to auto self-cast something like a blessing of freedom, you'll actually use it on the enemy team while they are mind controlled, so be wary of this. Next, you should disable both the self-cast and focus cast keys, as you'll want to manually assign these with your keybinds to prevent any conflicts. And any classes that have important skill shot spells that need to be aimed, such as Mass Dispel or Final Reckoning, should disable press and hold casting to prevent the spell from triggering from a right click and key press. Moving into social, one of the settings that's worth looking at is the display only character achievements to others, which lets you play in a sort of incognito mode by preventing your character from being linked to your other characters on the WoW Armory and other community sites. The final category in gameplay is Keybinds, which we already released a guide for, so be sure to check that out if you haven't already. With gameplay settings complete, there's just a handful of system settings you need to look at before we move into the most exciting part of this video, add-ons. First, in graphics, you want to make sure your camera field of view is set to the maximum value of 90. It should be no surprise that you want to be able to see as much as possible around you, and lowering this number simply limits your vision, which in turn impairs your awareness. UI scale is another important setting, which we highly recommend you set to 89%, as we're building the entire UI around this number. But of course, you can make your own customizations and have this set higher or lower. We just feel that 89% is the perfect middle ground between having your UI scale large enough to see everything, while not causing it to take up too much space and prevent you from seeing the world around you. It's then mandatory that you enable projected textures and have your particle density set to at least good. Without these settings enabled, some of the most important spells in the game, such as Ring of Frost and Smoke Bomb, are almost impossible to see. And if you're struggling with FPS issues, we suggest lowering shadow quality and view distance, as these two settings will typically give you the best performance boost when reduced. Moving into audio, you absolutely want to make sure you are making use of in-game sounds. To do this effectively, you should lower music and dialogue while increasing effects and ambience. Effects allows you to hear when you've done things, like faked a mage's interrupt, grounded a paladin's hammer of justice, and so much more. The ambience allows you to hear things like a rogue being nearby in stealth. Make sure you also disable error speech to avoid being spammed with constant error dialogue throughout your games. And with that, we're done with all of the import settings. Now it's time to configure your UI and add-ons, which all starts with our edit mode import string. We've conveniently put together everything you need to set up your UI in our Discord server, so you'll need to join that first by visiting discord.gg slash wow, or clicking the link in the description of this video. Once you've joined, head over to the Retail Add-ons section and copy the Skill Cap UI import string. Tab back into WoW, go to Edit Mode, open the drop-down menu, and click Import. Paste in the string you copied, give it a name, click Import, and you're done. The key changes we've made to this UI are the player, target, focus, and raid frame position, as well as the resizing of the debuff frame. With the foundations of your user interface now in place, it's finally time to dive into our recommended add-ons and their settings. First things first, head back to the Retail Add-ons channel in our Discord server and download the add-on pack. To install it, you'll need to unzip the downloaded folder, and then put the interface folder into your WoW Retail folder. If you also want to use the font seen in this video, you should put the fonts folder into your Retail folder. We then suggest downloading an add-on manager, such as CurseForge, to keep all of your add-ons up to date. Anyway, with our list of add-ons installed, it's time to head back into WoW, where we'll both explain how to set up each add-on while also outlining how these add-ons can increase your awareness and improve your decision making. Improve the overall look and feel of the UI and reduce unnecessary UI-related mistakes, and even help train you to be a better player. We'll then finish up with a handful of quality of life add-ons, one of which you definitely don't want to miss, as it includes some settings that are probably losing you games every single day. Alright, let's begin with the most important group of add-ons, the awareness and decision-making ones. To simplify things and make it easier to understand why we're using these add-ons, we've split them up into three categories, each of which help you achieve a very distinct goal. And although there will be some overlap between these categories, each will have a primary purpose. In this first category, we have Gladius, or S Arena, and Diminish, both of which exist to help improve your general awareness. Gladius, or S Arena, provides you with a one-stop shop solution to your arena frames, bringing trinket, racial, dispel, 
Bell, diminishing returns, and important aura tracking all together in one conveniently packaged add-on. As far as setup goes, we recommend positioning it horizontally across from your raid frames to allow for your peripheral vision to pick up most of the information you need, with quick and slight glances being all it takes to bring in crucial information such as DR tracking and high octane moments. The only other changes you'll need to make to Gladius are to reposition either the dispel or racial tracking as they overlap out of the box. You might also want to disable announcements to avoid spamming chat mid-game. One thing to note is that if you're downloading Gladius online and not using our version, you won't be able to click on frames to change your target and focus. Evoker spells are also missing, including their Dispel, Sleepwalk DR, and all important auras, so we highly recommend downloading and using our fixed version. Now, while we just focused on Gladius, you can of course use S Arena too, with the choice being 100% down to personal preference. Objectively, it could be stated that S Arena is the better add-on, as it's significantly easier to see the cast bars, but Gladius feels more beginner friendly and also makes it easier to keep track of DRs due to their size and isolation. Either way, you're free to pick the one you prefer, but we do recommend Gladius for beginners. Diminish is then a perfect companion to your arena frame add-on. The only frame you need to keep enabled here is the player one to keep track of diminishing returns on yourself. Doing this can enable you to predict and play around incoming crowd control on yourself. For example, timing a pre-sank on a kidney shot as you come off stun DR. In this next category, we have Omnibar and Fly Plate buffs, which primarily work together to help you score kills, but can also assist in staying alive. With Omnibar, we could honestly spend an entire video just talking about Omnibar, and that's exactly what we've done, as you can find an incredibly detailed Omnibar course in the Academy section of our site, which we highly recommend you check out. Veterans will be familiar with the grandfather of Omnibar, Interrupt Bar, which was an add-on primarily used to track interrupts of the opposing team. It has since evolved into a much more advanced version, known as Omnibar, which is not only used to track interrupts, but pretty much anything your heart desires. For your convenience, we've put together a document that you can find linked in that retail add-ons channel on our Discord server, which covers exactly what cooldowns we recommend you track and why. To summarize, we suggest that almost everyone use Omnibar to only track defensive cooldowns, which is critical for creating kill windows, enemy interrupts, which helps with both creating kill windows and staying alive, and crowd control you can play around, which also helps with both killing and staying alive. For example, a priest psychic scream or a monk's leg sweep, both of which can be avoided with your position, both when trying to set up kills and stay alive. Don't worry about offensives yet as we'll cover them in the next category. For now, it's just super important not to overwhelm yourself by tracking too many things, as if you do, you'll more than likely end up ignoring pretty much everything you track. Instead, you should take a less is more approach to tracking cooldowns. Utilizing this framework makes add-ons like Omnibar significantly more useful to you, and you can then start to track more cooldowns in the future, as the desire to track specific abilities comes to light. For example, some pro players recently neglected tracking Blinding Sleet, but after seeing the potential of comps like Frost DK and Devastation Evoker, it makes sense to start tracking Blinding Sleet to know when their setup is ready. We also recommend creating multiple bars for this and positioning them like so, with the interrupt bar being right above your cast bar, the defensive bar being right above the interrupt bar, and the crowd control bar being right above the defensive bar. Doing so will make it easy to know exactly where you're supposed to look on your screen to quickly get the information you need when you need it. Having every cooldown all mixed together in one bar can make it so much harder to do so quickly. And again, if you're interested in further learning with Omnibar and want to use it in a more advanced way to track offensives and stay alive, be sure to check out our Omnibar course linked in the description of this video. Also, skill cap members can visit the add-on profile section of our Discord server to grab a pre-configured Omnibar LUA to import and skip the process of setting things up manually. Next, we've got our complimentary add-on to Omnibar, Flyplate Buffs. This one, while not mandatory, is definitely a better alternative to the default buffs and debuffs that Blizzard displays over nameplates, which generally includes some useless buffs and debuffs that you do not need to see. Instead, with Flyplate Buffs, you're able to customize exactly what appears above nameplates and tailor it around your class. Now, while you may be drawn to using Flyplate Buffs to track every important buff and debuff, we're actually not going to track enemy offensives with it, as we'll be doing this with Weak Auras, which we'll cover in the next category. So with that in mind, we want to use fly plate buffs to primarily show enemy defensive cooldowns, as this will help with target selection and the timing of your offensive cooldowns so you can avoid bursting into a target that's already used major defensives. We also suggest showing crowd control on fly plate buffs too, as it's important to know when these have been overlapped. While many players rely on an add-on we're covering in the next category, big debuffs, to see crowd control on enemies, it only displays one buff or debuff at a time, meaning that it cannot show overlaps. So by also using fly plate buffs to display crowd control, you'll always know exactly what CCs your target is in. 
Once again, we've got a document in the add-on profiles channel on our Discord server linked for you to set up your fly plate buffs, and skill cap members can check out the add-on profiles section for a pre-configured LUA file. Now, let's cover the third and final category of awareness and decision-making add-ons, which includes big debuffs, omni-CD, and weak auras, all of which work together for the primary goal of helping you stay alive, but also contribute in a few ways to helping you set up kills. Starting with big debuffs, this is the sort of add-on that you won't realize you need until you play with it, and once you do, you'll never want to play without it again. What it does is simple. It makes debuffs and buffs, well, big. It has three primary modules. Raid frames, which makes debuffs much larger and easier to see on your raid frames. Unit frames, which displays important buffs and debuffs over unit frame portraits and nameplates, which displays important buffs and debuffs to the side of nameplates. For the best settings, start by going into raid frames. There, you should increase maximum buffs and increase max debuffs to something like 6. You can also ensure that hide other debuffs is not selected to avoid not being able to see things like rogue poisons. We then suggest keeping the anchor set to inner, as you've already got the focus frame on the right side of your raid frames, and you'll need to keep the left side free for the next add-on, Omni CD. Everything else in raid frames should be fine as they are. Next, go to nameplates. We feel that the default setting here is slightly too big, and prefer setting it to around 30. Finally, head into priority, where you'll want to make a few minor adjustments, namely bumping up crowd control and immunities. This is preferred because we'll be displaying offensive buffs with the other add-on we're covering in this category, weak auras. And we're already displaying defensive buffs with fly plate buffs, which we covered in the previous category. Also, if you ever notice spells are missing from big debuffs, we've got instructions in the retail add-ons channel on our Discord server on how to edit the LUA file to add other buffs and debuffs, but this typically should not be needed. Next, we've got the perfect add-on to pair with big debuffs, Omni CD. This works just like Omnibar, but in reverse. It's used to keep track of your teammates' cooldowns so that you can do a better job of deciding when to commit your own ones. Much like with Omnibar, we highly suggest you approach tracking spells on Omni CD with a less is more attitude, so that you actually make use of the cooldowns you're tracking. We suggest starting with just tracking your teammates' interrupts, major defensive cooldowns that can be used to both keep you and them alive, and important crowd control which can help with both staying alive and setting up kills. And once you start to utilize Omni CD correctly, you'll see a dramatic improvement to your decision making. For example, imagine you're low on health and feel the need to Divine Shield. Well, if you're used to looking at Omni CD, you might look over and see your Resto Druid has NS ready. A Paladin without this information might have used Divine Shield here when they didn't need to. Or you might see your Mage has Dragon's Breath ready, in which case you hold your Global to time across CC Hammer of Justice just as your Mage goes for the DB Sheep. Again, without this information, you may not have held onto your stun and waited to time it perfectly with your Mage's DB. Once again, for a list of recommended spells to track, we've got another document linked in the Retail Add-ons channel. And Skill Cap members can find an important string in the premium add-on profiles channel to quickly get set up. Next, we've got what's probably become one of the most controversial add-ons in recent WoW history, Weak Auras. This add-on is an absolute beast and can be used to literally do anything you want. We've got four Weak Auras imports in the Retail Add-ons channel, which you'll want to head over to now and import. Simply open up the link, click on Copy Import String, then get back onto WoW, type slash WA, click on Import, paste in the string, and save it. Each of our imports do different things, so we'll quickly explain their importance. First, we have the most important one, enemy cooldowns. This will display the icon of an active enemy cooldown at the top of your screen. Some will be paired with a glow and sound effect to stress their importance. Most of these are offensive cooldowns, and this is how we suggest you keep an eye on this type of cooldown to keep yourself alive. Now, as we mentioned earlier, you do have the option of adding offensive cooldowns to Omnibar 2 in order to see when they're ready, which again is something we cover in our Omnibar course. But because our goal is to avoid overcrowding your UI with too much information and instead streamline the process for gathering the information you need, we want Weak Auras to instead be your only tool you use for identifying when enemy players have offensives up. And as we already covered, our recommended Omnibar configuration is instead used to figure out potential kill targets and identify win conditions based on what enemy defensives are available. It's also worth mentioning we do also have a handful of defensive cooldowns too in the enemy cooldowns pack, such as Healing Tide Totem. Anyway, the next week aura pack is for tracking important buffs and debuffs on yourself. This one is quite simple and just makes it way easier to identify if you're in trouble or not. For example, seeing that your warrior has used Intervene or your Disc Priest has used Pain Suppression right in the middle of your screen 
screen will help you avoid overlapping your own defensive cooldowns when you're taking damage. And seeing debuffs like Death Mark or Feral Frenzy will make it easier to recognize when to play a defensive play. Next, we have the Party Cast Bars Weak Aura Pack, which add cast bars to your raid frames. We've got these set up just to the left of your raid frames, but you can feel free to play around with the position to whatever you prefer. This add-on is great for identifying exactly when your teammates' casts are going to land, and can help you do things like hold on to a defensive cooldown if you see a big cast at heals about to land. It can also help with offensive plays, like timing crowd control perfectly around your teammates' cast. And the last one is a simple enemy drinking alert to help you immediately see when this happens so that you can stop it if needed. This can be a massive deal in longer dampening games where a healer drinking can be the difference between you winning or losing the game. And with that, we're done with all of the awareness and decision making add-ons. This next set of add-ons are all about improving the default user interface in a functional way that will help reduce some potential mistakes. If you remember earlier, we told you not to enable show numbers for cooldowns in the action bar settings. Well, this is because OmniCC provides a richer set of features than the default functionality that Blizzard provides. This is primarily through the color and size change of the cooldown number, making it a little easier to see when your abilities are about to come off cooldown. Sort Group is then an extremely important add-on for anyone that has any sort of targeted team-wide utility ranging from things like a healer's dispel to a warrior's intervene. While players previously had the option of using macros that targeted a specific name, the introduction of solo queue means that playing with party 1 and party 2 macros has become mandatory. To that end, sort group allows you to ensure that you will always be positioned in the same place on your raid frames and guarantees that party 1 will always be the first party frame and party 2 will always be the second. We suggest enabling player on bottom and using the descending option. And to ensure you don't run into any issues with the sorting, it's important to make sure you sort your frames by group, which will automatically be done for you if you imported our UI string. Next, we have an add-on that on the surface seems like it's only useful for rogues, but it's actually an extremely useful add-on for every single class. Combat displays an icon next to your target and focus frame to let you know if they're in combat or not. While it's great to help rogues identify who they can sap during an arena game, it's also useful for anyone that's paired up against a rogue to try and avoid being sapped. The most typical use case of this is in the opener against a rogue. You may have a partner on your team that's much better at rushing in and getting into combat than yours. In these situations, you can target your teammate and the moment you see them get into combat, you can use an ability to get into combat off your teammate and avoid being sapped. These next two add-ons are proven to be quite popular among top players, with frame color being a nice aesthetic improvement to the UI, but more importantly, health bar color adds class colors to your unit frames, making it significantly easier to tell what class your target and focus are based on the color of the frames. And the final add-on you can use to improve your UI is Dampening Display. With Dampening being a lot more relevant due to how it works in Solo Shuffle, it's great to be able to quickly glance at the top of your screen and find out exactly how high the healing debuff of Dampening is currently stacked to. Next, we've got three add-ons which we've categorized as learning tools. First, we have Details, which is an extremely underrated tool for identifying areas of improvement. First, whenever you're up against someone playing the same spec as you, you're able to use the compare feature to figure out why one player might have done more damage than the other. Perhaps you used less of an ability, or maybe they were using a talent that you were not. Regardless of the reason, you can figure out what went wrong or right and use that information to make improvements to your own game. And it's not just about damage or healing. With details, you can even do things like find out why certain crowd control broke and try to avoid making the same mistake in the future. Another great thing to look at is interrupts to figure out if you are actually interrupting high value spells like Chaos Bolt and Vampiric Touch. So if you're not already using details like this, we highly suggest you start doing so. The second add-on is Trophy GCD. Now, this add-on certainly won't do much for you during your games, but it's a godsend for doing your own gameplay reviews. With this tool, you can look back at your recorded games and know exactly what ability you used with every global. One of the best ways this can help you is to figure out whether or not you were doing your DPS rotation correctly. For example, if an enemy player barely survived and then you went on to lose the game, you might want to check if your damage was on point when it mattered most, and if it wasn't, you'll know it's something you need to work on. The final add-on for improvement is is Reflex, which you can use to browse through the history of your arena games and identify which classes you're losing to the most. For example, if you always see red when you're up against a specific class, you might want to spend some time watching streams or checking out skill caps, commentaries, and class guides for whatever classes you're struggling against. And with that, we've arrived at our final set of add-ons, which are all about improving the quality of life of your UI. Now, this first add-on is incredibly important as it allows you to easily manipulate a handful of super important settings that you absolutely should not be playing without. The first thing you need to do in advanced interface
various options is to make sure display LUA errors is disabled. The redesign of the Blizzard UI is currently causing a ton of conflicts with add-ons, so disabling this will stop you from being spammed with errors. You then need to go into combat and change one of the most important settings in World of Warcraft, lag tolerance. Without going into too much detail, we recommend setting this to 100 above your world MS to make gameplay feel more fluid for any global intensive classes. We've got a guide dedicated to this topic linked in the description, so check it out if you're interested in further learning. Next we have Safe Queue, which is a convenient add-on that simply displays how long is left before your queue expires. Those of you who previously watched our Shadowlands settings guide will be familiar with Leatrix Plus, which was a core part of the setting up of the UI. With the new customizable UI in Dragonflight, Leatrix Plus is no longer mandatory, but we still recommend picking it up alongside Leatrix Maps for a few improvements to your gameplay experience. You won't need to make any changes to Leatrix Maps and can just let it work straight out of the box, but you will need to enable a handful of recommended settings in Leatrix Plus. In Automation, you can choose to enable Automate Quests and Sell Junk automatically and should definitely enable Repair automatically. We then suggest going to chat and hiding the social button to clean up the UI a little, while also enabling use arrow keys in chat to improve your typing experience in game. Recent chat window then makes it easy to copy text, and enabling both increased chat history and restore chat messages allows you to re-log while still being able to see previous messages. Moving into text, we suggest disabling hide error messages. You can optionally also disable hide portrait numbers, hide keybind text and hide macro text for a cleaner UI if you so desire. Just keep in mind that we don't recommend hiding keybind and macro text for newer players that are still getting familiar with their keybinds and macros. In frames you can enable class colored frames to change the glow above unit frames to also match the class color. And last up in system, faster auto loot and easy item destroy are two more quality of life features we recommend enabling. The final add-on is friend list colors. A simple add-on that displays your online friends is the color of the class they're logged on to while also showing what level they are. And with that, we conclude the only guide you'll need to set up your UI for PvP and Dragonflight. Once again, if you enjoyed this guide, be sure to drop a like and subscribe to help support the channel. And as a reminder, if you're interested in learning from some of the best players in the world, be sure to head on over to Skillcapped right now. There, you'll find our world-renowned courses that cover the A to Z of every class. What's more, our brand new commentaries page lets you easily find the matchups you want to see. Members can also get their questions answered by our team of experts and pro players in the premium section of our Discord server. And to top it all off, we even offer a money back guarantee if you don't see results. So visit the link in the description right now. We promise you won't be disappointed. All right, guys, that about does it for this one. We hope you enjoyed this video and we will see you in the next one.